Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Record Rangers podcast. My name's Gavin Berry and I'm delighted to say that once again I'm joined by the Sunday Mail's chief football writer, Scott McDermott. How are you doing, Scott? I'm good, Gav. You okay? Good, good. So, since we last spoke, um, Rangers went joint top of the league. Um, 2-1 win over Aberdeen on Tuesday Level on points, just behind on goal difference. Celtic responded 2-1 win at Easter Road on Wednesday to go three points clear. Rangers have that game in hand, of course. All important game in hand against Ross County coming up next week. But let's start with the Aberdeen game Tuesday night. Even getting into the game, it felt like, you know, well, there was real pressure there, obviously. Had they won by, you know, three goals, it would have gone top. Yeah. Um, never managed that, I'm sure most people just are taking any sort of win and that's what they got in the end. But when you look at the reaction after it of the players, even the crowd, it, it had the feeling of a kind of significant victory, didn't it? Yeah, the, the, the feeling of a of a club that's gathering real momentum, a team that's gathering real momentum. Um, you're right, I mean, going into the game, because the form has been so good, no, probably all of us, myself included, you start to think about God, if they could if they could win three now and go go clear at the top, you know, how significant could that be? But you almost need to take a take a step back. Remember where this Rangers team have come from in such a short space of time. And you're right, I mean Aberdeen have been a a, a major irritant to Rangers mm-hmm. this season, you no, know, despite their, their general form uh, in the league. So just getting any victory, um, you know, was really important for for Philippe Clement and the players. Um, but to be fair to them, I mean, they did it in the end with a, with a bit of style. I mean, I think they were pretty dominant for almost the entire, probably all of the, of the ninety minutes. I mean, apart yeah. from apart from Aberdeen's goal just before half time, uh, a really good, really good goal from from their point of view in terms of. Uh, how Mayovsky got it and how he finished it, but obviously poor uh, for Rangers defensively. That was the only kind of blot on their copybook on the night. I thought they played with a real intensity. Yeah. You know, they played quick, urgency. You know, the passing was good. You know, maybe in the first half they'd like to have created more guilt edge chances, but I think mm-hmm. that improved in the in the second half. And you have to say, I mean, it did feel that like the like a second goal, uh, a second goal was coming. Um, and when they got it, you no, know, you couldn't really see them. You couldn't really see them losing it, despite a couple of weak kind of hairy moments at the end. But no, a big, big, big win, really significant, and it just keeps the keeps the run going. Yeah, I mean, obviously the Scottish Cup on Saturday, United at home, and then that game in hand, which have been kind of waiting to play, and it's home to Ross County. They have just sat Derry Adams. And then that is the chance to, to go top. Celtic yeah. obviously then don't have the chance to respond. The fact it is Ross County struggling second bottom, just lost 5-0 to Motherwell. Is that a night when you think they, they could get the three goals needed? And if so, should they be going all out for that? Slightly different than an Aberdeen. I think so. I mean, I mean the first priority is just to win. I mean, no game's ever a, ever a gimme. Um I mean, ironically, such was Ross County's poor form. I mean, if, if Derry Adams was still there next week, then you'd have probably fancied Rangers even more. It's going to be interesting to see what Ross County do, but the likelihood is they'll have a new manager um, mm-hmm. in place. Personally, I, I don't think that Ross County squad are as bad um, as you know, as what they've shown in the last mm-hmm. the last few months since Derry Adams took over. I mean, I, I think... I actually think Malky McKay had built a decent enough squad of players there, and I don't think they'd be in this in this kind of precarious position in the league if he was still if he was still in charge. So you would need to think whoever comes in, they'll get some kind of bounce. But listen, Rangers at home against Ross County, given what's at stake, of course you would fancy them to not just win, but but win well. And as you say, you know, get those get those three goals. Or whatever it might be to get them, you no, know, to put them clear top. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say that? Oh, I was going to say. So, Air United on uh, Saturday, but just reflecting on that Aberdeen game again at full time, 
you know, quite often in midweek nights, and it's understandable, I know you always get the kind of jive of the, the subway oil and the oil and all that. I mean, even the chairman, Joe Bennett, had a wee dig about it, and then at the AGM, the subway oil got this name. On Tuesday night, you felt the stadium was full, and, uh, you know, it felt almost a bit more like a European night, but the fact it was Aberdeen and the fact that Aberdeen, you know, that win at the end of September was the end for Michael Beale. I mean, you were there that day, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. I'm right in saying, yeah, the 3 1 defeat. I mean, yeah. to, the, the contrast of, I mean, that's that really sums up the impact of Clermont, doesn't it? If you just take those two games. 100%. And listen, shortly after that game, Gav, I mean, we probably said it, but I know for a fact, and we've spoken to Rangers fans, I mean, the league was gone. I mean, mm. the, honestly, I mean, the league was... Uh, no, people had given up on the league. They'd almost just kind of said... They'd almost just written this written this season off um, mm. in terms of the actual title. I mean, that, that's how bad it was. And you're right, I mean, the atmosphere... The atmosphere at full time, that Aberdeen game, I mean, it was absolutely toxic. Uh-huh. Uh, at that time, and you just you struggle to see a way back for a lot of those a lot of those players. So you're right. I mean, the contrast to claw back a seven point lead, and not just that. I mean, Clement's made a big thing in his press courses recently. He hasn't just clawed back the points. He's he's clawed back the punters, and he's clawed back you know that synergy as he calls it between the fans and the players. Yeah. But really, really looked as if it had been lost. And you're right. I mean, at full time the other night. It was reminiscent of, of those European nights on the way to Seville in the, the Europa League mm-hmm. final. I mean, that's 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 what it felt like. But yeah. well, you need to remember how imp- you need to remember how important this title would be, to Rangers. I mean, fifty five under Steven Gerrard was of course will forever be iconic, you know, for for all the reasons we know about. But it's still only you know, it's only one title in a in a decade for for Rangers. Yeah. Um, so it's absolutely no. It, it would mean so much to these supporters, especially as you say, given we, where they've come from this season, when it looked mm-hmm. as if as if all was always lost. I mean, as I say, the title was being was being conceded by yeah. supporters. So that's seven eight points. A Celtic team managed by Brendan Rodgers. Yes. After a disastrous, what what appeared like a disastrous transfer window for for Michael Beale, where. No, vast sums were spent on players that evidently just weren't weren't good enough. Yeah. Uh, so the turnaround, the turnaround since Clement came in has been has been staggering, really. Yeah, I mean, obviously it has taken. I mean, Celtic have, have wobbled. I mean, and, and it needed that to happen as well. I mean, Celtic, from their point of view, will be looking and saying we, the door should never have been opened. But yeah. but it still needed it needed Rangers. I mean, even Celtic, you know, dropping the points they have. I still needed Rangers to put a, a, a consistent run together like they have, which, yeah. as you say, I mean, they needed the two. And the thing about it is now, I mean, really, uh, uh, we've seen the league tables since Clement took over. And, you know, if it hadn't been for that, such a poor start, you know, I mean, Rangers would probably be six or seven points clear. I know. If Clement had been... Yeah, and, and Clement, you know, when a new manager comes in, of course there's always there's there's normally an initial kind of bounce from it. But given yeah. where those players' morale was, you know, we're talking about after that Aberdeen game under Michael Beale, you know, to me that, that would normally take time for, for a manager just to, to yeah. build that up again and you know, to, get, to get confidence back in those players. And listen, remember at the start, it was a it was a struggle, some of the performances under Clement, I mean, the, the one that probably sticks out it was Hearts at home. No, when Danilo, Danilo scores yeah. very late on to win 2-1. To win I mean, Rangers were, were poor that day and it was, well, the performance was really poor. The, the stuff that we're seeing now from Clement's team in terms of combination play and the, you know, the quick passing and the link-ups and stuff like that, yeah. you know, that, that wasn't there initially because he, he didn't have enough time. So at that point, he just had to had to find a way of winning games, yeah. and instilling a belief in the players just to keep just to keep themselves in it. You no, know, at that point when when they're obviously hoping that at some point Celtic will slip up. So he deserves huge credit for that. I mean, the caveat, as you say, is 
obviously they've needed Celtic to drop points, which has now happened. No, where I would maybe take just a step back and tell fans, you know, just be careful and not to get too carried away, as obviously, you no, know, the one defeat Clements had was against yeah. Celtic. No, yeah. he went to Celtic Park, and you, know, you might think this Celtic team are struggling or they're not, not as good. No, they still managed to beat Rangers. No, Kyogo still managed to produce a moment of brilliance to go and, yeah. go and win the game. No, I know, no, Cyril Dessers now has is, is, no, got a bit of a bit of support back for the, the punters and he has been better obviously yeah. in the last the last wee while but me and he was so poor that day you know, he, he wastes wastes a big chance. I still think Celtic with a very you no know, with the strongest eleven you no know, yeah. Carter Vickers and Hatati and yeah. you know, everybody back I still think they give Rangers a right good game and it, and it's tough you no know, that'll be tough for Rangers to win even at Ibrooks you no know, I don't think Coming to Ibrooks now won't phase these Celtic players because you know, because they've done it there, they've won it there, they've done it done it this season when, when odds were stacked against them and they, they yeah. players. So that's the one thing I'd say. I mean, Rangers have done brilliantly just to get themselves back in it. And they are the team with the momentum. I, I do think, despite yeah. last night's result at Easter Road, yeah. I still think there's a there's an air of negativity surrounding Celtic, which is affecting which is affecting their players, you know, this kind of fight between the fans and the board off the back of, yeah, obviously, a poor uh, January window in those eyes, and um, in, in, in the eyes of the fans. I do think that's that's had an impact. You know, I was at Pataudry on Saturday for their game, I mean, you're, you know, when your team's running out for a, a, a vital away game, really tough away game, and the punters are sitting, you know, fans are singing about the board, and it's banners, and it, I think, Personally, I think that does have a does have an effect, and it doesn't doesn't help the players. Um, but as I say, you know, the one the one kind of caveat is when Celtic get their strongest eleven with this manager, you know, they'll still give Rangers a right good game. So I wouldn't be taking anything for granted at the moment. Yeah, and you're right, and, and this was the point that Neil Lennon was making. I think recently when we spoke about it, and he was maybe you know he spoke about them not having the mentality. You know, and they were kind of. I think. I think it was kind of construed as they were kind of Rangers were weak mentally. But I think he, he was talking about the hold that Celtic have over, over them. But he was talking about in derby games. He was talking about in old firm derby games. So you're right in what you're saying. Celtic have them too this season. But it's, know, it's easy. It's easy, Gav. For, I understand Rangers fans get excited now, but yeah, going potentially going top and knowing the next old firm games at home, of course, you're yeah. Going to fight. Yeah. But surely, with everything you have seen, you know, bear in mind, Phil Clement's first experience with the Old Firm game was away to Celtic. You have no away fans, oh. you know, and, you know, they performed not too badly. They had 10 men towards the end and lost 2 1. You know, they didn't disgrace themselves. Surely, you know, with everything that's going on, you you would still fancy Rangers. You know, you, I'm saying you wouldn't bet against them winning that game, would you? Oh. I mean, Rangers will fancy themselves. I mean, if, if the game if the game has been played tomorrow, no, I think Rangers would be you know, yeah. pretty pretty heavy favourites. I would think. You no, know, with, with the biggies, given where both teams are, as I say, given the kind of the morale and you know, yeah. the the kind of noise around each team. Uh, I mean, the, the perfect example is like you no know, Celtic a couple of weeks ago, one one nil against Ross County, and they're getting booed off the pitch. Yeah. Well, if Rangers, if Rangers go one one now against Ross County next Wednesday, yeah. it'll be celebrations again at, at full time because you know that that could take them that could take them top. So that that's that's the difference we you know in terms of the you know, in terms of the feeling around both clubs just now, and that that is a big a big thing. So as I say, if the old firm game is tomorrow, Rangers will be heavy favourites, and when it does come round, of course, Clement and the players will will fancy it, but. I, I don't. I think it's dangerous, you no, know, to get complacent. And maybe get, yeah. maybe get, maybe get ahead of yourself because I say, I remember, you no, know, I was speaking before the the first old firm game of the season when Bill was in charge, and there was still a lot of kind of positivity about Rangers getting into getting into that game. Celtic were missing players. I think, they had, like, they had drawn at home to St Johnston. Celtic as I, well. Didn't I, was, they? I mean, everybody was talking about Lager Bielka, his first old firm yeah. game. Yes. And, yeah. and all of a sudden Rangers, no Rangers don't turn up. 
basically. Yeah. Sell <laughs> one one kill one. This is the different Rangers. I mean, this is surely surely you're accepting them. We now know that, that that Rangers team and that manager was not yeah. I've seen that Rangers team. I mean, a lot of them are the same players. That manager was not up to doing it. No, of course. And and Rangers no, since then, no, they've actually added kind of reinforcements. Yeah. Uh, I think the I think the new boys that have come in in January, albeit it's it's early, but I think they're going to have a positive impact on this this team. And you could argue also they've managed to get out guys like Lammers and Sifuentes and that who weren't who weren't clearly weren't weren't quite up to it. So you're right, it's a it's a it's a different team. It's yeah. a different stage of the season. But I suppose I mean I'm not trying to put a dampener on yeah. Rangers fans' excitement, but I do think it listen in football, yeah, uh, doesn't matter what team it is, it's it's dangerous to start getting start getting ideas above your above your station. Yeah, absolutely. But and do you think that is the other difficulty now is that I mean it, it's so close at the top, right? And you're right, I mean it could go either way. The momentum is with Rangers in there, and they do have plenty of confidence. I mean, let's say just for example, Celtic won the league by a point, you know, yeah. would it be difficult? You know, to to the, because they got so close, you know, because I always think back to that Aberdeen game we were talking about, where it's seven points behind, and and there was a point where you know once it was clawed back a bit, where I thought, well, anything now is a bonus really for Rangers because as you say, they were out of it, fans yeah. thought they were out of it, they've clawed themselves back into it, but you know, would it be hard to look upon that and, and, and look at that positive side and say, well, look where we are now, we've got a good manager, we can start afresh next season closer, you know, because well, the chance is there now. It, it would be hard, but, I mean, they would need to do that. I mean, you, you would... If they end up winning the League Cup and the Scottish Cup, but they lose the title by a point, I mean, yeah. it's still need to say it was a pretty successful season. They've also got a European element as well, but, but, but yeah. I do think... If they were to lose the league by a point or even a couple of points, I think that's where the real regret would come in. You know, in terms of what you're talking about, about if only they'd started the season better. You know, if yeah. only Clermont, if only Clermont had a come in earlier. Yeah. You know, if only, if only Bill had yeah. a got the, you no, know, had, had a better strike rate in the, you no, know, in the, the summer window. I mean, all those regrets I think would then come into come into play if it was so tight at the end of the season and you lost it by. By fine fine margins, um, it would be difficult. But I think overall, you would need to say, look, Clement only came in in November. You know, I was speaking to somebody like that last night. You're thinking, you no, know, if Clement was to win a treble or even even a double, you know, he would, given as I say, where Rangers were in the league when he came in, he would probably be up there. You no, know, he'd probably win Manager of the Year, and people would say, well, that's, that's ridiculous. He only came in. in November, but I think that would be, you no, know, the, the level of achievement people would see that level of, achie- of achievement just from dragging Rangers up from where they were. If they could get to a, to a double or a treble, I mean, I think it would be manager of the year hands down. Oh. I mean, there'll be a few, there'll be a few candidates, but yeah. um, it's very, very rare. I mean, I can't remember. You know, two years I've been involved in the football writers for a long time. I mean, I don't remember a manager of the year. Uh, picking up his award having only having only arrived in in November. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. it would be pretty unprecedented, but that's no, it's possible. Yeah. Um, and that that's all down to that's all down to Clement himself, obviously. Yeah, because funnily enough, I was talking to somebody this other day when we were reflecting on that Aberdeen game, the three one defeat under Michael Beyonce. I mean, what odds would Rangers have been, you know, to win the league? But his argument was that the bookies, you know, even that early in the season. Excuse me, bookies see, bookies just see the Scottish Premiership as a kind of two horse race, you know, and they and they wouldn't go big. He says you would probably find Rangers with about five or six to one, which kind of shows me. I was going to say five to one, that probably because well, but, but in 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 your head and you know and in the head of punters, I know bookies aren't probably going to make that mistake, but I mean you could probably lay a thousand to one or thousands oh. because nobody would have you know knowing Scottish football and the way it works. No, you know, a seven point lead, like you say, Brendan Rogers, you know, experienced manager, you would not have expected him to drop the amount of points it has. Um so so that said, although we are saying they might have only been five or sixty one, you know, in, in reality in fans' mind you could have they could have ten thousand to one. I mean, where would that rank in terms of 
shock upsets in terms of title wins? I mean, I, the ones that we probably remember at well, Rangers stopping Celtic winning 10 in a row, you know, a few seasons ago. At yeah. the start of the season, you know, nobody really anticipated that. But to be fair, Stephen Gerrard at least had a few years of building towards that. You think of yeah. the Vimy Anson season when um, Celtic stopped Rangers winning 10 in a row. I mean, nobody, I mean, he just came in that summer. You know, Rangers were spending big. Nobody could have predicted that. Helicopter Sunday, you know, I suppose that that's that's it's slightly different. But I mean, where would this rank? Seven points behind come on coming in. Oh, listen, it would be up there because of the, the circumstances, as, as you say. I mean, uh, honestly, I mean, in fans' eyes, it was gone. I mean, if a punter tells you, Rangers supporter tells you, no, when, when Bill left, he still thought there was a chance. Then I think I think they're lying. I mean, I just mm. nobody could have foreseen Clement having such a such an impact. I think most fans thought no, mo- most fans were pretty pleased with the appointment, but I think I think they accepted the fact it was going to take the guy time. No, it was a Belgian manager that never worked in Scotland before coming into our game. No, be a really good pedigree and a good CV, but I think people accepted it was going to take him take him time, especially given the kind of no, the kind of car crash is maybe a, is too strong, but spe- no, the disaster that was that summer window. No, you th- think you that Dessers and Lammers and people like that coming in who, as I say, right for the off just didn't look up to it. it. It was clear, so you take all of that into account. As I say, I think most punters had, had given it up. So where would it rank? I mean, it would be right up there. You're right. I mean, Helicopter Sunday in terms of just a day, you no, know, on the day, the odds were obviously totally stacked. I mean, you could never see that. Oh no, sorry. I didn't mean on the I didn't mean on the day with the helicopter Sunday. I, I meant more the fact that we're seven behind with five yeah. to play. You know, yeah. so I'm, I'm, I think Celtic came to Ibrox and one two one, didn't they? I think with the seven uh, five clear was it five clear uh, whatever they went but from that moment from the moment Celtic won at Ibrox I think there was there was a few games left yeah and so it was so a lot was, that moment, was, there, was there not a season you no know, one of the ones that Walter Smith won yes was seven, it that the Samurai miss it no McGregor saving the penalty is that, is that right my memory served me right that, yeah. that McGregor save Samurai's penalty Rangers won yeah that was Rangers Start clawing back a deficit. No, no, I think the bigger one under uh, Walter Smith was the 2009 when Scott McDonald scored the sort of the volley. They won one looks in the New Year game, and that sent them seven clear. So that was right. seven clear in January. So yeah, I suppose in terms similar, of uh, yeah, some, similar to that, some, similar, similar. But, 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 but is the difference here not that you're talking about Walter Smith was in manager? Wow. He had been yeah. over the piece, so so it's a, it, it had it had the same deficit and less time to claw back. But yeah. and under about, Walter, yeah, because under Walter fans would probably never give it up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They would know, as you say, he's been there and done it. You know, they would always cling on to that hope that you no, know, a Walter Smith team would go on a run, or they would go to Celtic Park and one and win because they'd done it so often. I think this. You're right. I mean, this this was different. This was there was real optimism at the start of the season. It went badly wrong for for Michael Beale, uh, you know, pretty quickly, and as you say, we a new manager coming in, fans not really knowing what to expect. We a squad of players that obviously weren't his, and the, the kind of money was all gone. As I said, honestly, there was just there was. I remember having conversations with with Celtic, uh, with Rangers fans, and you no, know, I, I remember vividly them saying, look. Obviously, the, the league's gone. He, Clement's just got to do this. He's got to do that. He's got to try and win the league cup. No, the, the title was gone, and and maybe that was daft because you no, know, it was only November, and it was only seven points with you no know, with three old firm games left to play. But that was just the feeling that that's how low, you know, that's how low these these supporters felt, uh, and how how badly the team were playing. You no, know, going back to that Aberdeen game. As Bill's last game, I mean, the performance was, I mean, it was dreadful. So, to 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 claw that back, as I said at the start, not just to claw back the points, to actually claw back the performances, the the confidence and belief in the players, that that synergy Clement's spoken about yeah, between the fans, it's been, 
no, it's been a, a remarkable feat in a relatively short space of time. Um, and the momentum's with them now. They do, they do have a real chance to go and make it, make it memorable. But as we've touched on, there's obviously still a chance that this Celtic team could come back, and you do, you no, know, you do lose it narrowly in the end, and that'll be that'll be hard to take. But I think at that point, fans will need to try and look at the at the big picture and the season as a whole and realise where they've come from. Uh, Clermont's done a done an incredible job. Yeah. I was just looking back, sorry, at that game just while you were talking there. Um, yeah, Craig Bellamy scored, Rangers won Celtic two, so I think they went five points clear with four games to go. I think Celtic lost to Hibs the following week, if I remember correctly, and then lost to Motherwell in the last day. Yeah, so they lost two of the last four. Um, yeah. Now, just to touch on, it seems to be that you, that you can't have any game now without referee decisions being analysed, but I just want to, well, I want to quickly tell you, well, there was there was two apparent claims for, or there were two claims for handball against Conor Goldson in the Aberdeen one on Tuesday, sorry to take you right back to that game now, when we oh. moved on from that, but um, analysed after the game on uh, Sky Sports, but I'm just, while we're on, Bobby Madden, former referee on Instagram, today spoke about that and he also spoke about the Hibs versus Celtic uh, penalties as well they also yeah. get two penalties and their one now he said on the no of course there's a Dujon Sterling red card what did you think of that first of all I must say I mean, when, I, when I saw it at first live my immediate reaction my instant reaction was it's going to be a red card just for oh. the just for the pace. However, obviously, when you see it back and you see the replays, no, it's no, it's no high, it's no, uh, it's no, it's no that dangerous a tackle. I mean, his foot's kind of on the ground. They obviously catches him, catches him the foot or the or the toe or whatever. Um, so, I mean, it's probably a wee bit harsh. And obviously, like everybody, when the referee goes to the monitor uh, after being told to by his by his pals at, at Nvar, mm. you, automatically, you automatically think he's going to downgrade it to a to a yellow. I mean, that's ultimately that's the reason they're sending him to the to the monitor because they think they think he's made a, a clear and obvious error. Um, mm. So I was shocked when he when he stuck he stuck by it. I mean, I think it's I think it's borderline, Gav. I don't think you can complain too much about it, as I say, because I think my instant reaction was no, he's. With the speed he's gone in it, I don't think he's got too much control over himself, which mm -hmm. they bring into play. I thought initially it was going to be a red, but obviously you see it again and you realise you know, there wasn't too much danger in it. So it was maybe a bit harsh. And as I say, I expected the ref to, to yeah. change it. I was, I was surprised when he didn't. Well, Bobby Madden says if he was pushed, he would go with a yellow, but he says there are elements to support a red. So it, it could have yeah. gone sort of either way, a bit like you're saying. But on the Goldson, on the Goldson handball ones, it seems pretty clear. In the first, he says the arm is in a natural position for the action, short distance, uh, and it would hit body if not arm. So absolutely not. And for the second, the defender has fallen to the ground at short distance with his arm on way to supporting him. Hopefully yeah. one day he will realise that not every ball contact with hand or arm is punishable. So he's yeah. pretty clear that neither of the goals in handballs were penalties. Was yeah, that your yeah, yeah, it is. But I mean, I think the second one, the ref had already given a foul anyway, hadn't he, for a push on, on Goldson? Um, I think you might have said that was irrelevant. But, but yes. Um, yeah, that, I mean, the, the second handball, I think, is irrelevant because you see the replays and Don Robertson has already given a given a free kick to Rangers. So, I mean, he, could, he couldn't have then given a penalty. And the first one, I mean, without why it sounded like Michael Stewart, I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting a bit fed up with the, the handball things in terms of these, these claims where it's so close and it's so quick. I mean, listen, of course, if there's a deliberate handball in the box, or of course, if there's a shot and it's getting clear into the goal, or even on target, and there's a handout that, that stops a potential goal, then no, you're gonna you're gonna want a you're gonna want a penalty. But these ones where the ball's bobbling about 
in the box. Uh, that first one with Connor Goldson, where there's like four players so tight, the ball's in the air and it's it's bobbling about hitting off people and it just glances his his hand. I mean, honestly, if we're giving penalties for that, then I mean the game uh, no, the game really is up a limb. Do you know what I mean? Um, so no, I mean similar to the similar to the you no know, the other games we've seen. I mean the, the Dundee one, Dundee Hearts last week. No, Lauren Shanklin shot. No, it comes off Ashcroft's arm, but I mean, it's so quick. The ball's flying at him at no, many miles an hour. Uh, and it hits his arm. Ref gives a penalty. I was at St. Johnson v. Hearts game last night. There's almost the, there's almost an identical incident when the uh, Sadibi hits a shot and it comes off Alec Cochrane. I mean, they got the, the shot is going towards goal. Cochrane turns his back, it hits the side of his arm. If you give the Ashcroft one, you really should be giving the, the Cochrane one. But again, quite but last night, quite rightly, the ref says no, it's it's not a pain. So listen, it's a cliche, but it's though it's that kind of inconsistency with the with the decisions that, that frustrates everybody. But no, in general, those handball ones where it's so close in the box, I mean I'm just I'm I'm on I'm getting fed up with everybody, everybody. Claiming for everything, you not know, just glances somebody's somebody's arm, and suddenly people think it's a penalty. That the game, the game just can't can't be like that. So, no, I don't think I don't think there's a huge uh, a huge claim for the the Goldson one. If I'm honest, yeah. Okay, right, Scott. I've kept you long enough. Thanks very much for your time. Um, and hopefully, we'll catch up next week when maybe Andy will be back to join us, and we can reflect on the. Scottish Cup fifth round tie against the United, by which time Rangers are certainly favourites to be in the quarter final uh, draw, which takes place on Sunday. So that being the case, as long as there's no major shock at Ibrox on Saturday, we'll know who they'll face. And that Ross County game on Wednesday, where uh, a convincing one would put them top of the league. I'm sure Scott Brown will get a warm welcome Saturday night. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> I'm sure he is. And Aidan McGee. Hi, of course. Aye. He said he said he said he'll send him out first. <laughs> that was quite a good game. <laughs> he'll send him out first to take the heat off me. <laughs> okay, Scott. Thank Thanks. you. Cheers. Bye.